Yo, what up? It's Wolfgang here, ready to own some souls at TCH 1025. Who the heck is this guy? <laughs> DC one time at the lodge, thinks he owns my channel. Give me this thing. Okay, we're here at TCA for some 1025. English Bulldog is here. If you guys watched that last lodge video, you know he crushed me in that last stand. It was like a 20K pot, ace queen versus king 10. We recruited him to come all the way up here to uh, Dallas, play on the live stream, which means part two revenge coming in right now. I'm in for $5,000. This match is stacked. Gonna get a lot on the table. Let's run it up. Let's go. Playing 5, 10, 25, there's a limp over to me. I look down at a suited 8, 7 of hearts. I make it 150 to go, and we're going to get called in two spots, Home and Bridge Mike. The British Bulldog didn't drive a few hours north up here to Dallas, not to put in a 3-bet. He makes it 750 with the ace-jack offsuit. Action's back over to me. Both folding and calling seem fine. Folding because you'd be out of position, calling because you have a suited connector. I decided to put in the call in this spot, and that brings Bridge Mike in as well with the snowman. On an ace-5-4 board, I'm always going to start with a check into the preflop aggressor. That's what myself and Bridge Mike do, and the Bulldog bets out for 550. I'm going nowhere with a gutter and a backdoor heart draw. I put in the call off to the turn, which comes the 9 of diamonds. Doesn't change anything for myself, so I check it over once again. The Bulldog decides to check behind now, so a little bit of a tricky play from him, and the Queen of Clubs peels off on the river. When he bets and then checks, and the action's on me on the river, I can't win this pot, obviously, with my 8 high, so I'd have to go for a bluff if I think that's appropriate in this spot. Like I said, though, the Bulldog has a suspicious line. He 3-bet pre, and then he bets flop, checks turn, and then the action's on me on the river. This kind of smells like a hand like Kings, Queens, Jacks. Hopefully he doesn't have Queens. I don't really think he's going to have too much Ace-X when he checks back on the turn. I guess I could have pocket 9s or pocket 5s, and he'd want a pot control for that. But uh, yeah, when there's $3,500 out there and I'm left with 8 high on the river, the opponent has shown a little bit of weakness, so I'm going to try to target that and fire out into the pot and try to take it down. I decided to go two thirds here for $2,000. We get snapped off by top pair, obviously. He didn't check back the turn to fold for 2K on the river. And just like that, straight out of the gate, the Bulldog takes down Wolfgang here. $9,500 pot coming over his way. Hopefully we can get into a few more interesting ones with him before the session is over. All right, we top back up. We're in for $12,000 at this point, And I look down at Ace Jack Offsuit from Under the Gun. By under the gun, I mean the $25 blind. There's a few calls over to G Money, who makes it $250 to go. The Rhino decides to flat Ace King off from the big blind. Action's on me. I could go for a 3-bet with Ace Jack off. Instead, I decide just to put in the call. That brings in a few other players as well. And we're going extremely multi-way to a flop. Hopefully, we don't flop ourselves an Ace. We'd be in a lot of trouble. A Jack would be clean at the moment. That's exactly what comes on an ace-king nine board. We are in a heap of trouble. When the action checks over to G-Money, he decides to bet out into the field with his queen eight off. Kind of a risky play. Now, I haven't played with Rhino before, but immediately when uh, I see him just call preflop instead of three bet, I kind of exclude ace-king and ace-queen from his range. But as we can now see, ace-king firmly in the preflop calling range. I decided to put in the call here, so that's about 600 bucks that I'll probably never see again. So that means we are going three ways to the turn, which comes the six of spades. I immediately get let off the hook, though, when Rhino decides to rip it all in for 2.3k. Guess his plan was to call pre, call the flop, and then just rip the turn. Ace Jack here is top pair with a decent kicker, but when uh, we're faced with an all-in jam for 2.3k, I think now we can confidently get away from this hand, especially when G-Money is still behind us to close the action. He could have kings, aces, nines, all of that good stuff. So I get out of the way, G-Money does as well, and Rhino couldn't take it down there with the top two pair. The knit game is on, we're playing it for $100 a person, so pretty expensive if you lose it, and I look down at 5-4 offsuit and decide to come in for a raise to $150. There's not many people left at this point, so I have to go for it. Home puts in the call with my favorite hand, sevens. AJ's in the mix as well with a pair of aces. Off to a flop, which comes ace, 10, six. Obviously, that's terrible for us. AJ has top pair and is going to get sticky in the spot. He knows I have the nit button. When the action checks over to me, though, I'm still going to have all of the strong aces. Just because the nit game is on doesn't mean I can't pick up a good hand, right? Yeah, so I go for a bet here into the $500 pot for $175. Home with his sevens. He gets out of the way. A smart fold there by him. AJ's going nowhere with top pair mediocre kicker. 
and we are off to the turn, which comes the King of Clubs. Actually pretty interesting because it brings in King-10 now beating AJ and Queen-Jack as well. So when he checks it over to me for a second time, I think it's a much better card for my range than his. Have to go for a bet if I want to win the knit game and get him to fold. There's 885 out there and I like a two-thirds sizing of around five to 600. And uh, that's kind of what I do, $450, a little bit smaller than I just mentioned. By going small though, it looks like it's confusing AJ. It kind of looks more like value. Maybe if I polarize and went around 700 to 900, he might put in the money here. But my small bet is gonna get AJ to fold top pair. Pretty great feeling for me, turning over the 5-4 offsuit and showing the table that we came to play. This next hand, we are going incognito mode. You guys cannot see the opponent's hand, so feel free to play along with me. It's button versus the blinds. G-Money opens it up to 75 from the button. We've got Rhino putting in the call, and I decide to call as well with a nice ace nine, and we flop ourselves two pair on an ace queen nine board, bang, and two pair for the Wolf King. The action does not check over to the button G money. Instead, Rhino just ships it in both of our faces for 1.6k, a massive overbet. He's tired of waiting around. He apparently has a decent enough hand to get it all in. I have two pair, and uh, I'm definitely not folding top and bottom pair. Of course, he could have queen nine or ace queen, I guess. We're beating one of those and losing to the other, so pretty decent spot for us. I put in the call G money out of the way with pocket threes. Let's see what Rhino has. Ace Queen, how does he just have Ace Queen there? He's flattened some premiums pre-flop and getting Wolfgang here into some trouble. And we are going off to a run out, not a great spot to be in, 88 to 12%. And let's see if we can catch up on the turn or river. Turn does not help us in the river, seals our fate. And apparently I can't beat any of the other animal nicknames at the table. The Bulldog and the Rhino are up 3-0 on myself. We're moving right into the next hand though when I get the Bullets. Pocket Aces, finally a decent hand to win some money back. D-Man opens it up from the button to $150. I'm in the big blind, gotta come in for a 3-bet. I like a $600 sizing. Is that what I decide to do? Approximately. I make it $550. And just like that, D-Man folds. So right when we were going to find ourselves in a good spot, D-Man out of the way. And we are winning the minimum in that one. Going to go incognito mode once again. We find ourselves with a premium ace queen of spades from under the gun. Bulldog raises it up to 75 from the hijack. He gets two calls from G-Money and Rhino. And the action's on me. As we now know, Rhino calls some pretty good hands pre-flop, so I can't immediately just put him on a speculative one, but I gotta raise it up to 475 with ace-queen suited. Bulldog comes in there, and Rhino does as well. We are off three ways to a flop here. Pretty big pot brewing already, and I like my chances, though, with ace-queen suited. Would love an ace or queen high board, and that's exactly what we get on a queen 9-6 board. Expecting the action to check over to me, but all logic goes out the window when Rhino just bets out into the field for $500. I flop myself top pair. There are two hearts out there, so a little bit of worrisome. There's 10 jack being a draw, 7 10 being a draw, and uh, of course the hearts out there, so I could be going for a raise. Instead though, I decide just to put in the call. I'm interested to see what the Bulldog does behind. If he had a hand like 6s or 9s, he'd come in for a raise and immediately tell the strength of his hand. So I put in the 500 here as a little bit of a feeler, and now we are off to the turn, heads up with Rhino. Turn comes kind of a clean one, it's the jack of clubs. Sure, he could have queen jack or nine jack and now have just gotten there, but when he checks it over to me, I really like this because I think I have the best hand. If he has a heart draw, he'd probably bet the flop and check the turn, I guess. So I need to go pretty large here and get some value against a lot of his draws and his worst one pair type of hands. I go a little bit small though, I go $1,000 into the $2,500 pot. Probably would have liked to see $1,500 to charge the maximum for those draws. But Rhino Snap calls us, bring us off to the river, which comes the nine of clubs. Rhino goes for an interesting line. He bets the flop, check calls the turn, and now bets out onto the river when the hearts break off. It's $600 to go. Could he have a nine? Absolutely. Could he have six full? Absolutely as well. But he's also gonna have a lot of worse queens and some missed heart draws. I think the sizing is just way too small if he does have a heart draw. I decided to put in the call, and uh, we can see now that he has ace five of hearts. Interesting line by him, but I'm not complaining in the slightest. $5,700, a massive pot, and much needed reinforcement for this next hand. We are gonna battle with Homei on our left. 
D-Mans opens it up from the button. I decide to 3-bet from the small blind with 9-7 suited. You can't only be 3-betting with premiums like 10s, queens, aces, all that good stuff. You gotta throw in some interesting hands as well. That way you're perfectly balanced and can show up with a lot of different things on different board textures. I make it 450 to go, which I think is a good sizing. And you can see that Home is cutting out some chips. Is it a call? Is it a raise? He decides just to put in the call. So interesting for him calling out of the big blind. At this point, I'm putting him on some suited connectors, some high ones at that, like 10 jack suited, queen jack suited. Maybe a hand like ace five that didn't want a four bet. And maybe hands like five, sixes, and seven. Stuff like that. So yeah, let's see what D-Man decides to do. He says no more. Out of the way. Just like that, we are off to a flop, which comes jack, nine, eight, giving me middle pair, a backdoor diamond draw, and a gutter to the straight. The action's on me. Like I said though, homies range at this point, I'm putting him on a lot of small pocket pairs. Eights and nines would constitute a good portion of that range as well. You'd also have a hand like 10 queen, queen jack, all that good stuff. So I don't really think a bet accomplishes too much other than getting a hand like ace queen or ace 10 suited to fold. So when I check it over to home A, there's 1100 in the middle and he's gonna fight for it and fires out into me. It's $650 to go, so a pretty chunky bet. I just have middle pair, but like I said, a lot of backdoor ideas, so I don't think I'm going to check fold in the spot. I put in the call with a $1,000 chip. I get some change back. I'm going off to the turn, which definitely improves my morale. It comes a seven of clubs. Look at that. Somehow, some way, we have turned two pair, and now if he has a hand like ace jack or queens or something like that, we just sucked out on him and are poised to win a pretty good pot. Gonna check it in flow over to home a. Not gonna bet out a turn or do anything too crazy. Hopefully he goes for another bet on the turn, get some value here, and proceed on the river. There's $2,400 out there, so I'd expect him to go around half pot for $1,200. He decides to go a little bit less, though, for one-third, which is a little bit interesting. It kind of feels like he's trying to continue the betting lead, so I don't go for a raise, and then he would check back on the river with a one-pair type of hand. If he checks back on the turn here with a hand like, let's say, jack-queen, then I could fire big on the river and maybe get him to fold a better hand. So kind of like that he continues the betting lead with whatever hands he has. But as you see, I have two pair. I could go for a raise now and try to get value from all the jack x and over pairs. Instead, I decide just to put in the call once again. Kind of an interesting line because it allows him to check back the river like I just mentioned. But at the same time, it's a $4,000 pot and we get gin once again on the river. The seven of spades. Bang, we river a boat. That it's gonna back out a boat here for Wolfgang. God, this is gonna be super weird if he leads, but you kinda have to, almost. You can hear that the announcer said this is a weird spot. Immediately checking over to home eight, I don't think is the move. I think I need to go for a bet here and get value. Sevens full is a hard hand to make, and I wanna get value and uh, don't want him to check back a jack. So I decide to go for an overbet here and make it look like a bluff and I rip it all in, in his face, a 4.9k effective bet into the $4,000 pot. Now while I was thinking for a minute before going all in, I was looking over at his stack and thinking about the appropriate bet size. If I had any bluffs in this spot, I'd have to go for an all in. So my logic in the moment was with my value, I also need to go all in as well. I probably also could go for a small sizing of around 1500 to 2 k and just try to milk out a little bit of extra value. But at the same time, if I'm bluffing, am I really going to go for that small sizing? Probably not. So if I'm always betting small when I have a good hand and always shoving when I'm bluffing, for the most part, that's kind of an easy situation for opponents to read. Want to be balanced here? I decide to rip it all in and home it in a tough spot. Let's see what he has. Pocket kings. He has pocket kings. Didn't put in the four bet preflop. So his hand is massively underplayed at this point. It's under rep. Pocket kings overpaired to this board. The board has gotten kind of scary. But at the same time, that double pairing seven on the river makes him beat hands like jack nine suited, nine eight suited, all of that good stuff. So I wouldn't blame him here if he decided to put it in. He goes into the tank for a while. I'm doing my best Tom Dwan impersonation, just staring at one card on the board. And he's not in a fun spot, not one that I envy. You can see though, if I did decide to go 1500 here, he probably would have snap called me by now. But like I said, for balance, gotta shove it all in here with a boat. And there's still a chance he will put in the money and will win a massive one here, a $15,000 pot. But after a lot of theatrics, some moaning, some groaning, Home makes the fold of the night. What a fold. Pocket Kings just believed I had a better hand. I do a little whistle. I can't believe he folded Pocket Kings. We're going to take down that $10,000 pot 
working our way back from being stuck around $7,000 early on in the session. $50 straddle is on in this next one. AJ opens it up from the hijack with ace nine offsuit and I find myself in the small blind with a good three bet candidate. I decided to go around 4X to $750. The action's back over to AJ. Ace jack offsuit probably just a fold most of the time but in this one, he puts in the call, gets a little sticky. We're going off to a flop out of position versus AJ which comes interesting on a queen nine eight board. I've completely missed at this point. AJ has not though, he made second pair. A board that might connect a little better with him than myself. He's going to have more of the 8s and 9s. I'm going to have more of the stuff centered around the queen. I like mixing here between betting and checking in this moment. Out of position against AJ. I decide to check. And he checks behind bringing in the 4 of diamonds. I'm not only going to be checking when I have missed the flop. I'm also going to be doing that with hands like queen 10, queen jack, ace queen as well. So when the 4 of diamonds peels off, I would start to go for value with all of those good hands. Got to also go for a bluff with all of my bad hands like ace jack high. There's $1,600 out there and I decided to go for a sizing of $750. AJ gets sticky here with his second pair. I don't blame him honestly. I think uh, folding here would be a little bit nitty and just allowing me to barrel through him and uh, bluff him too often of the time. So he puts in the call bringing in a great card for me to continue bluffing on the river. It's the king of diamonds. I say a great card because hands like ace king and king jack and king 10 now have made top pair and I can comfortably go for value against all of his queen x holdings. Additionally, there's $3,200 out there in the middle of the pot. So do I really just want to check it over to AJ for him to check it back with third pair and scoop this pot? Absolutely not. We're playing on a live stream in Dallas, Texas. The players are crazy. So you got to match their drive some of the time and go for some bluffs. That's what I decided to do. I toss out two 1K chips followed by some black ones as well. 2.5K is the bet. I would be doing this with all of my good hands like queens, king, queen, ace, king, king, 10, king, jack. So a lot of good hands that I'm doing this with and a lot of my bluffs like ace, 10 and ace, jack as well. Uh, yeah, tough spot for AJ. I don't envy him in the slightest. At the same time, though, he has third pair. There's probably going to be much better spots he can put the money in, but he's not folding. He is looking me up and down. I got to do Tom Dwan impersonation once again, stare at the middle of the board. Don't give anything away. At this point, it's a $5,500 pot, and if he puts more money in the middle, it's going to be an 8K one, so not too shabby here. A lot of meat on the bone for AJ to fight for. And uh, yeah, he's thinking about all of his options. I guess AJ doesn't think that my check on the flop is ever with a good hand because uh, for him to consider calling with third pair here, he really has to think that I'm doing this light. Little does he know I am doing this very light with ace jack high and his pair of nines is good. But after a little bit of a tank, he does in fact decide to fold his cards, giving me a sweat in the process though. But that was some hard earned money, a $5,600 pot coming over to me. And just like that, we are finally almost even on the session. Let's freaking go. All right, we're down 1K at this point. We're in for 14 grand. We had 13.1 in our stack. And I look down at the beautiful bullets and raise it up to $100 from the hijack. Bridge Mike puts in the call. JD from the small blind decides to go for a three bet and pops it up to $450. AJ's in the under the gun position. He also has the nip button in front of him and puts in the call. Not exactly the strongest of ranges I'm putting AJ on at this point. So when the action comes back around to me, we have a three bet in front of us and a call. A dream spot for us. I want to go large here. I think somewhere around $1,000 to $1,400 would be appropriate. I don't have the nip button in front of me, unfortunately, because that would allow me to have a little bit more of a wider range. But at the same time, my vases here, I'm not complaining. And I toss in a bunch of black chips and come in for a four bet and make it $1,400 to go. Bridge Mike out of the way with King Jack of Spades. You can see that JD is going to fold from the small blind with seven deuce off. We were playing it for $100 a person. So credit for JD for going for it. But unfortunately, he ran into the best hand ever created. Worst hand versus best hand. That is not a great recipe for success. AJ still has a mystery hand and he's going nowhere. Decides to put in the call for around $1,000 more with the knit button in front of him, and the flop comes jack, nine, eight, a $3,400 pot, and this board is kind of spicy. AJ checks it over to me, and not exactly the best board for myself. AJ's gonna have a lot of hands like eights, nines, he could have some queen 10 and 10 seven suited as well. 10 seven suited is a little bit speculative, but all of those first hands definitely make a lot of sense. 
maybe jack nine and jack eight as well. For that reason, I think I like checking behind with pocket aces. I'm also gonna have a lot of whiffs on this board like ace queen, ace king, king queen for two overs and a gutter to a straight. On the turn, when it comes to 10 of spades, it connects the board even further. He could just have some random queen X in his hand and now have a straight. Likewise, he could also have a seven and have me beat as well. He goes for a bet now, which I don't really love, but it's small for $650. And obviously I'm going absolutely nowhere with pocket aces. I'm still beating all of his one pair type of hands and he has a nip button in front of him. So he's incentivized to go for some bluffs and get me to fold. Like I said though, pocket aces never gonna fold. I put in the call. That brings us off to the river, which comes the six of clubs. If AJ has a good hand, I would expect him to continue betting. If he also had an air ball bluff, I would also expect him to continue betting. So now when he checks it over to me on the river, I'm putting him in somewhere in that middle range. Maybe he has a hand like two pair. Maybe he just has a one pair type of hand like king jack or ace jack. Seems a little bit unlikely. The action's on me. Do I go for a thin value with my over pair against a player with a knit button? I probably could, however, that does open the door for him to just rip it in my face. For instance, if I go 1500 or 2k and he just shoves for 7k, I'm in a spot where I have to fold and I just lit 2k on fire. So for that reason, I check it behind. I'm comfortable getting to showdown here with my one pair on a very, very wet board. I check it back and AJ immediately turns over the set. Pocket eights, the snowman, just when we were about unstuck. Pocket aces versus eights in a dream situation. He's only going to win it one out of every five times. But tonight, that one time comes now. He is taking down that nearly 5K pot. Yes, this is the very next hand. Last hand was hand number 110. This is hand number 111 on the session. And uh, yeah, a little bit of a needle from the poker gods, letting me know that I just lost that last one. They're gonna give it back to me, see if I can win some of that money back. I'm in the low jack and decide to open it up to $150. When it folds around to the $50 straddle, D-Man puts in the call with eight deuce suited. Oh boy, you see how this one's gonna go. He whiffs the flop. I go for a C-bet and D-man folds. Little insult to injury there, picking up the best hand ever created, losing it one time, winning a small pot with it. But what's that? We got an encore in this video. One more hand to go. We're not gonna end it just like that with a little bit of a needle. Hijack, once again, the knit game is on and I look down, ace jack offsuit. Seems like I picked that up a bunch in this session. Both Home and AJ put in the call. Linius off to a flop, which comes ace, ace, three. Fine, we flop three of a kind. When the action checks to me, I'm out of position versus Home. The knit game's on. We just want to fade a spade on the turn. That kind of rhymed. That was fun. And uh, a spade we fade. It comes the six of hearts. There's $515 out there to fight for. Let's see if AJ decides to go for a bet when I check on the flop. Yes, he does. That check is going to get me some extra value versus his queen high. He bets out for $250. I think both calling and raising are fine. If he has a hand like ace 10, ace 9, ace 8, we want to raise and get value versus that. Additionally, all of his spade draws we want to get value from as well, which I don't think he would fold to a raise. So I decide to pop it up immediately to $800. Home is out of the way. And unfortunately, we can see that AJ just had queen high in this spot with no draw. So he folds. We show our hand, get rid of the nip button, and take down the last hand of the night. Let's bring it to the outro to see how we ended up. All right, here's the deal. We weren't able to get back any of those losses. So uh, when we last checked in, I was down 3K. We ended up losing 35-10 in the session. Uh, not the best, but after being stuck 7K early on, pretty proud of how I uh, stayed in there, battled, topped up, and uh, yeah, we got aces in versus pocket eights pre-flop. And of course he hits an eight. That was like a three or 4K pot, and then just a few other weird ones as well. Against Georg to my right, we played Queens, and I think he had Ace King. That one was stupid as well, but you know what? Three and a half K loss. We um, won seven and a half K on the stream last week. So gotta look at things in the long run. Can't be short sighted. As always, thanks for watching this video, you guys. Really appreciate the support. A lot of fun live streams coming up in the future. If you wanna see me play lower stakes, please let me know down below because I'm really just incentivized to play these big games here while I'm in Dallas. But, you know, I'll throw some 1-2 and 2-5 in there if you guys want to see that as well. Want to be relatable here on the channel. Good luck on the felt, you guys. I'll catch you in that next video. Peace.